All right. So the recording is starting now, and I'm just going to share my screen really quickly before Hannah and Sophie get started. Um, all right. Can you all see my screen now? I can't see it yet. Oh, I can see it now. Okay, great. Um, so I just wanted to show really quickly. So our um, NPC homepage just went through uh, a redesign, get some new things going before Inspire. So you will notice uh, you know, some changes with the banner size and then three call to action buttons here right under the banner. Um, one is introducing our new cloud and AI community. So congrats to Mickey and um, the cloud and AI team for getting that moving. And so that just launched today. So that's going to be very exciting for our cloud and AI partners as we recruit and move them into this space. And so that's one major change I wanted to point out. And then the next one is uh, just pointing out the, the Inspire uh, call to action here. So as partners continue to land an NPC and want to uh, get more information about what's happening. I think we're essentially we're at capacity in terms of uh, partners signing up for Microsoft Inspire, but that event's coming up. There's some great information in there. So this uh, CTA goes directly into the Inspire page. And so that's right on the homepage. And what's really cool about this is uh, there's a uh, OCP action from Corp around uh, Inspire 365 and how do we continue this event, which is a moment in time throughout the entire year. And so I've had some great conversations with um, our partner team, the partner recruit team around what type of content we can put into MPC all year round, how we can bring different experts from around the company into MPC um, around kind of the Inspire or inspiring um, more with partners. And so that will be built out over the next uh, in FY19. And then the last one is the partner event calendar, which will feature all of our different AMA events, of course, and different events that we want all partners to be aware of. And so those are some of the changes that were just made yesterday uh, in NPC. And so, you know, as our accounts come back online and um, we're able to access NPC through our own accounts, uh, please be sure to go in there, look around at the new uh, opportunities within NPC. So I just wanted to make you all aware of those different changes. And so with that, I will stop sharing my screen and um, turn it over to Sophie and Hannah to talk for about 15 minutes or so around the UK partner zone, what their Yammer community looked like um, when it was previously existing, why they decided to move into the uh, NPC space and what the success has been in the UK partner zone since then. So Hannah and Sophie. Thanks, Keisha. I've also got Hannah with me here as well. Hi. Uh, so, so yeah, previously we had a Yammer community with about 2,000 people in it, and it was a mix of Microsoft employees and also partners as well. Uh, and obviously we had the initiative to come down, and that suggested us to move over to the new Microsoft partner community platform. And we did have quite a few people on there previously, but not as many as we'd like to. And obviously most of the people were on the Yammer community. So the whole process overall kind of took about six months with the first three months or so kind of planning the roadmap, kind of aligning to Corp, making sure, you know, we're doing everything the right way and how we're going to actually do this. Um, so obviously we originally used Yammer and we opened up the UK partner zone to encourage people to migrate over. Um, and obviously this was about 2,000 people at the time, but we couldn't really tell how many people were active within the Yammer group, but we obviously we can do this on the MPC. Um, so the way it worked, we had two Yammer networks running parallel for about two months, obviously the Yammer and the MPC, and then we then closed the Yammer group about two months later, and we had successfully migrated about uh, 1,400 UK partners over, so that in itself was a great success. Um, the, the, there were kind of many methods we used to promote the MPC to UK partners because quite a few of them weren't actually aware that it existed. So we had things like a section in the MPN newsletter. We promoted it on the Yammer network that was live at the time. We had many, you know, internal comms going around OCP. We created internal readiness guides so people within Microsoft kind of knew all about Partner Zone and the MPC. And if they did get any questions from partners, they would know what to say and how to answer it. Um, we also created uh, some internal user, external user guides, so obviously partners could reference to that if they had any questions, as well as reaching out to us as well. Um, we did create an MPC promotional video with partner influencers, so 
various CEOs from partner companies and obviously some advocates within Microsoft as well. So that was a really good thing to use. And obviously we promoted that through Twitter and LinkedIn and things like that. And that drove a huge amount of uptake. Um, we also hosted internal readiness meetings and drop in sessions with various people around the business. So including partner development managers um, and that sort of thing. Um, also doing feedback sessions, so the PDMs got feedback from their partners and obviously we consolidated that and escalated it back to Corp. Um, so yeah, that's kind of in, in a nutshell really. Um, previously on the Yammer Network we had a couple of private groups, so for example we'd have Dynamics 365, Partner Concierge and a lot of our partners said basically we don't want to migrate over unless we can kind of have that replicated for us on the MPC. Hence, the partners, UK Partner Zone was born. Um, and since it's been created, um, we have had a huge uptake of registrations and engagements. So I think the fact that we've replicated that from Yammer to the MPC um, has been a massive benefit for us, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Has anybody got any questions at all? So I, I, this is Keisha again, I'll jump in. Um, so I think some of the really cool stuff that we've talked about in the last few months is just the, the value add and the partner feedback that you've gotten. And so could you ladies touch on um, once you, I know it can be a hard transition to move from one existing platform that, that you know partners are used to and then having staff move and then partners move and making yeah. that adjustment. But you said you've gotten some great feedback from partners in terms of what they like about the localized partner zone fill and being an MPC and getting these additional sources of information and talking to different partners across the world through MPC. Can you touch on that a little as well? Yeah, of course. So I think the main thing for our partners at first was think, you know, we don't really like change. We don't want to change. We really had to persuade them to move over. Um, I think a couple of things were, well, for example, on Yammer, that there were things that made it individual. So we had within groups a document dump, and that kind of wasn't replicated in the MPC. But there are alternative solutions like hosting on a SharePoint and that sort of thing. Um, I think and a, a couple of other bits of feedback we've had include like the notifications you get to your inbox. Um, you do get a lot more notifications in the MPC as opposed to the AMA network and our partners do like that. It means they can stay in touch with people and obviously not forget about threads that they're having and things like that. Um, I think probably one of the main features that the MPC doesn't have as opposed to Yammer was the announcements feature, particularly um, Microsoft staff use that quite a lot. Um, but obviously we, we can't do that in the MPC now. Um, uh, but I, I do think a positive with the MPC, and a, a few partners have said this as well, is that when you do post a thread or create a new thread, you can see how many views it's had. So they're getting that level of, you know, they can see the engagement rates and that sort of thing. And obviously, we, Hannah and I have access to the Lithium platform, so we can see, you know, we can deep dive into the engagement rates and see what's really happening with the reporting, the analytics and sort of thing. But those kind of people on a local level and people that are just in OCP can have a little bit of an overview of that as well, really. And I also think what's really good about the MPC that um, Yammer didn't have so much is the consolidation between the threads so that instead of it, um, as you scroll down the feed, it looked quite messy on Yammer, whereas now it kind of individual threads that can keep everything in the same place. So although it doesn't have document dumps, at least everything relating to that thread and that topic will all be in the same place, will all be stored there which I think they found really um, useful. Yeah, definitely. Um, Hi, Sophie. This is Cindy. I joined Microsoft recently. And um, I have one question about because our I am responsible for CSP. And also CSP Yammer community was requested to migrate. So I have one question about migrate. Yeah, sure. When when you were migrate, uh, did you post those conversations to the Yammer community and also MPN community as well? How did you synchronize? At first, um, sorry, I'm just jumping in as Hannah here. Um, at first, we did try and duplicate some of the content. Just while we were, we, we'd start to kind of drop the pebble in the Yammer group and start posting that we were looking to migrate and that we were looking to shut the Yammer community. So, but, so we did try to encourage people, don't wait until it's um, completely shut, like start migrating now because we will be having conversations on both platforms. And I think what a lot of people noticed is 
they were getting a lot more information on the global uh, on the MPC because it was a global level. So on the YAMA, obviously, it was just UK partners, whereas they started suddenly having the same conversations, but with global partners and getting different insights, which I think a lot of people actually found much more useful. And then they decided they kind of gradually actually started going to the MPC for their queries rather than posting in the Yammer. We did see a huge drop of engagement in the Yammer towards the end, and that's when we started seeing the rise in MPC. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the fact that we ran Yammer and the MPC alongside each other parallel for about two months gave all of those partners, you know, the opportunity to migrate over. That some of the partners weren't as active as others on the Yammer group. Um, so within about, I think it was about a month, mm -hmm. we'd had nearly half of the people migrate over and obviously we were posting updates throughout that time encouraging people to you know migrate over um, but also with things like the MPN newsletter people that weren't on any of the networks um, they could have visibility of the MPC and obviously we could persuade them to join that so we have had many entry routes with regards to that. That is thank you. Hi, it's Heather. I, sorry I joined a, a bit late, so I'm not sure what you covered, but um, uh, a couple of questions that I have are about audiences. So I'm not sure, are you, you know, are you breaking out your audiences at all that, you know, of those that have migrated, so more from a, a technical versus a business sales marketing um, would be one of my questions. And the other question that I have is we've been sort of testing the MPC um, in Canada, but obviously we still have Yammer running though. And what I'm finding is I can see um, people who are responding and none of them are from Canada. So is there a way to get any reporting data that would show me country level as uh, you know where they came from? So those would be my couple of questions. Um, I can jump in on the second question in terms of the reporting. So I look after the reporting for the UK side of things. And there is actually on the Lithium platform, there is a filter which you can do it by country. Um, I tend to look at the country more because I, I see better kind of with everyone. I, global doesn't really mean much to me. Um, so I always filter to the country and then I can start looking more into engagement. You can start seeing how long they spent online, UK members. So I think it tracks it by the IP address. Um, one thing that we try to do, so when we had the private groups, obviously we that was in the UK partner zone and we try to click onto the partner's profile and kind of police it slightly and make sure that they were actually UK partners because we were found, finding that on the UK partner zone, which is open to everyone on the discussion board, we did have people from Germany and other countries replying, which is, is great because they can still get that global level, but um, we kind of wanted the UK partner zone to be specific to UK partners. So how do you police it then? So, um... so Normally, it is just a case of a partner will usually have um, a location on their profile. Right. Um, and normally, we just kind of make sure that it is that they, you know, UK specific. Um, it's easier for them. Sometimes we have quite large intake, and obviously, when things are busy. Um, but we did try and keep it UK specific, and we were thinking of also now doing an events forum, which is kind of in the plan. Um, and things like that, again, it would just be UK events. So I hope that other partners from different level, uh, from different countries wouldn't really want to be too involved with that. Um, but you never know. Um, but it is, we, that's why we've been doing things like the, our UK MPN newsletter, been trying to promote content out. If we have, say, a topic that month that we're discussing in the UK zone, we will discuss, we will promote that in the UK MPN newsletter, the UK partner Twitter, uh, MPN newsletter and Twitter, um, but I, I understand it is difficult sometimes when it's an open forum to make sure that it is just either Canadian specific partners. And has I, any? Sorry, guys, it's Nikki. Uh, I just wanted to add to what Sophie was saying. Um, you do have the option of closing uh, your your area to only specific partners that you let in, similar to uh, Yammer Group. Um, but the question becomes, do, do you really want it to become a very closed zone or do you want, uh, like the UK is doing, to kind of 
police around it, but at the end of the day, if somebody from Germany or how, wherever has an answer to a question that somebody from Canada is asking, you want them to answer it, right? And I don't mind that. I guess it's more about looking at the data and making sure that we are actually successful in driving Canadians um, there to visit and view and read our material to make sure that we have successfully migrated Yammer over and, you know, we're continuing to, to grow it, right? Yeah. So it's, um, it's really more making sure that I'm meeting my objectives. I'm happy to follow up with you after the call and show you kind of a little how to filter by the country and make sure that it is looking at partner specifics to Canada. Um, I'm happy to send you an email after this. Okay. Now, um, and I'm not sure if, so I'm an A dash. I, the reporting was limited to FTEs initially, and I'm not sure if it still is or if they've expanded that. Uh, Lakeisha, do you know about that? The reporting within lithium is what you're saying, Heather? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay, so my understanding is if you are a community manager within uh, MPC in the Lithium platform, um, TJ, our community moderator, if he uh, grants you certain admin rights, you should be able to access the reporting and be able to see all of the different data and analytics as, as anybody within the, the uh, who has admin access would be able to see it. So I don't okay. think that, that there should be any limitations in that regard. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just getting a, a message from TJ. He said that his uh, Skype wasn't working. He's been trying to fix it, so that's why he hasn't joined us yet. But um, for those of you who don't know, TJ is our community moderator, and he does a lot of these conversations and demos and uh, does overall oversight of uh, the website. And so this is a nice time just to transition uh, quickly into kind of overall information about NPC. So uh, my name is Keisha Jackson. For those of you who I have not met or talked to in some form or fashion, and I joined Microsoft three months ago, as the new owner and global strategy lead of Microsoft Partner Community. So I sit in one commercial partner team in corporate and um, I'm tasked with the, the awesome job of working with all of you to really bring the best community experience to our partners and to really uh, understand what all of your interests and needs are in terms of your partner communities and how corporate can support that with the digital tools, that digital engines and digital tools that we already have. And so I really appreciate all of you joining and um, have you know learned a lot with questions and different information and definitely talking with Sophie and Hannah quite a bit in the past few months um, and MPC and our global team we really think about the UK partner zone as a very strong model of how do we engage in this conversation with other community managers and different partner zones different regional areas and bring uh, that conversation and that success story to the top and so I'm glad that Sophie and Hannah could be on the call today. We could record it and um, really get that information from them of what's been those great successes. From kind of resource perspective, I believe in the email that I sent to all of you, you should have seen a couple of attachments for, the, for those of you who haven't been as involved in MPC. One of those attachments, I'll just share my screen really quickly here. So you're able to go back and reference it later. And let me know when you can see the screen. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Yeah, we can yeah. Say. Okay, perfect. So a couple of those uh, resources for those of you who are thinking about this still or what this might look like or how to find success in this space is the community playbook and then also um, a uh, PowerPoint that was put together. So both of these were attachments uh, in the email that I sent out in regards to this meeting. And so there are some, these are very quick resources, uh, very short, easy to consume around uh, from the perspective as, of a community member. How would you, um, you know, share the value proposition with your partners and um, help them with the, the migration process of, hey, we're going to make this move because it's going to help you enhance your business, give you access to more folks at Microsoft and allow you to start conversations and have really have a, a fast line, fast track to different experts, people within Microsoft who are able to help you um, with your different business issues. And so this is this platform is really around these are where we want business conversations happening and where we want partners to be able to easily and quickly assess and access uh, different Microsoft people and then meet other partners as well. So there's that uh, quick 
PowerPoint. Um, I sent it over as a PDF. And then the community playbook is also very helpful. Uh, and this is, these are for the, the perspective is people who own, operate, manage communities uh, would be the folks who these materials are really directed at so that you're having those conversations with uh, different partners. And so uh, please be sure to check out those materials um, as you're thinking about this process. And then the other final thing that I will say uh, that I included in the email is uh, inspire for those of you who know that you're going to have um, partners attending and oh, if you're going to be attending we definitely want to engage you in these partner sessions that i'm highlighting that was also included in the email that i sent to you we have two focus group roundtable sessions set up we're going to have some great swag items but this is really an opportunity to invite partners into small group conversations and to really ask those questions build out for 90 minutes what does it mean for a partner to be in digital community why do they come to community what are they looking for? I think we have an idea um, from the Microsoft side and perspective of what we want partners to do once they get into community. But I think it's uh, very important to hear directly from partners, get that feedback and really take note of that as we build our FY19 plans. And so you'll see we have one session on Monday morning uh, during Inspire and then another one on Wednesday afternoon. We'd love to see 10 to 15 partners at each of those sessions. Um, I think the room could probably hold more, but I think 10 to 15 is a really strong number for uh, the number of staff in the room that can sit and have the conversations and really record the feedback. If any of you are planning on being an uh, Inspire, please join us for these sessions. We'd love to have you. And we're going to be sending out some communications in the next day or so around uh, specific recruitment for uh, partners and so I uh, will definitely send this information to all of you if you can share that with your partner networks and different um, community groups that would be greatly appreciated and we're gonna have calendar invite uh, in, embedded in those emails and on MPC as an opportunity for partners who want to attend to add that to their calendar because uh, we definitely want to hear their voices. So if there are any questions about those materials, I um, am glad to answer any of those questions now. Great. Um, like I explained it so well, there are no questions. Great. Um, and then I also wanted to give an opportunity. I see TJ that you've joined the call. I think you're here now. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? I've had the worst trouble this morning with my computer and Skype. <laughs> You're not yes. alone, PJ. It's okay. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's just Skype. <laughs> um, yes, we can hear you. So I just wanted to give you an opportunity, okay, TJ, if you had any additional – I know you, you missed most of the call. Uh, we did uh, – at the beginning, I did show the uh, new changes to the homepage. I did talk about and highlight uh, that there's a call to action for the cloud and AI community, uh, which, Mickey, if you want to say anything further about that, that would be great as well. And then I showed some stuff about Inspire and talked about our Inspire 365 plans and then the event section as well. But I don't know if you have anything additional you wanted to add, TJ. Um, no, I think that covers it. I mean, uh, as long as people know kind of where we're headed and what we're planning for Inspire, I think uh, that level of visibility is good to share. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and Mickey, do you want to say anything specific? I know that the Cloud and AI uh, community just launched today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, basically, the Cloud and AI uh, area within the MPC is, is, is effectively similar to the U UK partner zone, except instead of focusing on the country, you're focusing on the on the cloud and AI partners, so all the partners that are, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, saying uh, let, let's focus on the ones that are uh, looking to do anything from CSP to Dynamics to Azure to uh, uh, any, any kind of AI and ML kind of uh, functions. And uh, we're trying to take all the content and all the um, relevant information and put it under one area. And we, we just launched it today. It's still young and uh, um, just beginning, but we intend to make it very big and uh, thriving. Really, that's all I had to say. Excellent. Yeah. So um, <laughs> if, if not uh, outwardly said, I will say I think that <laughs> there's a lot of excitement of people on this call and, um, you know, a lot of partners as well around NPC and all of us together working in collaboration are going to make this a really, really great tool for partners. And this digital engine, I think, has the, the opportunity to really think about what does digital transformation look like? It It's partners giving us that feedback, partners doing more, driving more for Microsoft, for their own businesses, 
all of us working together in this global economy, global space. And so I think MPC is a, a, a small part of this larger vision, but a very important, crucial part of it. Um, my GM of our uh, go-to-market and programs area with N1 Commercial Partner, Toby Richards, was talking last week about just the importance of everyone's role in supporting digital community. And he was sharing with me that uh, both himself and our corporate vice president, Gabriela Schuster, have a really vested interest in MPC and in digital community and what that means for partners and our organization and our business. And so um, know that there is executive level support around this uh, the space and around NPC and even though we're essentially a year into the relaunch there are a lot of big goals and hopes for this and so one of those big goals and hopes is in the next fiscal year really driving up the number of partners in NPC to 50,000 and so that is like the big wild goal um very like audacious and I think that we can get there I think all of us working together and having those conversations and thinking um, what's relevant to the partners in the space that you're in and how do we all drive them towards this global platform is really important and so I appreciate the partnership that you all are willing to give in your time happy to answer any questions you will have my email and information about uh, this tool and how to use it and if regardless of which stage you're in whether you're you know already established in your community within NPC or you're thinking about how the migration process happens, myself and TJ are both here to support and partner with you to make those transitions and migrations happen and happy to answer any questions. And of course, if anybody's got any questions with regards to, you know, the migration process and experiences, that sort of thing, feel free to reach out to either myself or Hannah. We'll be happy to help as well. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Much appreciated. Awesome. Well, with that, I, I think that we are uh, probably at the point where we've answered all the questions, talked about a lot of different information. This call is recorded. We will post an NPC and send it out um, via email as well. So you all have access to it, can refer back to any pieces of information that were provided. And with that, everyone have a great day and thank you so much for your time. All right. Can I just ask one more question? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Um, I uh, was reading through some of the materials that you had sent, and I noticed that there was an event widget or event kind of uh, component to it. Yeah. Do, you ha do you know if anyone is running that, and if you could kind of show me what it looks like or you know, give me a URL so I can kind of take a look at it? Yeah. At my leisure, I'd be very interested, because a lot of the information that we're trying to get out has to do with an enablement. Yes. Um, so I'm sharing my screen again. I think I shared this uh, before you joined the call, but I'll show oh, it again. No, 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 no worries at all. And I can uh, definitely speak with you further about it. Okay, so we just had the redesign of the website that just launched today. And here uh, you'll see the CTA right under the banner that's partner event calendar. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you can go into here and then it, it kind of breaks down um, by specific area around different events, different discussions going around Inspire, which uh, TJ has been uh, continuously posting several times a week for the last several weeks. And then um, we have the Ask Me Anything specifically, that area broken out and all those topics that are tagged with that so that partners can refer back to it um, under those specific events that are tagged. And so um, I'm glad to talk with you further about that off and a, a separate call or communication. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that's where, in, you know, right on the homepage, you can go directly into it in that CTA. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're so welcome. Awesome. Uh, if there are no other questions, thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, and have a great day. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys, so much. Bye. Goodbye.